Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So I'm finally back with the second part of the 3D printer enclosure builds. I've now added temperature control to it and I've also taken the electronics of the printer outside the box so that they're not in the hot air anymore. So in this video I'm gonna show you how I did it. Before I get started with the video, I want to thank PCBWays for sponsoring this one. They make extremely high quality PCBs for a very, very low price, so that even you hobbyists out there can easily get your own PCBs manufactured, beautifully etched on both sides, cut through with VSS, silk screen, and all of that good stuff just for $5 for 10 pieces, which is just crazy cheap. And if you're ready to go to the next step and start getting actual assembled boards, then you can get started at just $88 for 10 pieces fully assembled out of their factory. So make sure to check out PCBWay at the link below. First of all, I wanna really quickly say that I'm sorry that I haven't posted in a while. It has just been really busy with school since it was the end of the semester, but now the semester is over and it, I should have some more time. I'm going on a skiing trip next week so not 100% sure if there's going to be a video next week, but after that, I should be back to the normal schedule of a video every Friday. So my objective was pretty clear. After the first part, I knew that I didn't need to add any heating since the heated bed alone was able to get the enclosure up to temperature quite quickly. But what I certainly needed is a way to cool the thing. So I've added an intake fan right here on the side and an exhaust fan. On the exhaust fan, I've also added a carbon filter so that when I'm printing materials like ABS that put out rather toxic fumes, that they get filtered out nicely and I get clean air. So to control these two fans, I've used an Arduino with a temperature probe that is attached to the hot end, not, not exactly to the hot end, but to, just to, to the cartridge that moves around. Uh, that is basically where the most important part of the chamber is. So once the temperature in that part exceeds the temperature that I've set on with a wheel on the display, then the fans turn on and they remain turned on until it, the temperature has dropped below that set temperature. Pretty simple actually. The electronics that I'm using is just a simple Arduino I was gonna use an Arduino Nano as this is basically the cheapest small uh, solution, but the one I ordered didn't end up working, so I used the Pro Mini, which is kind of overkill for this project since I don't need any of the fancy USB controller in integrated into the chip goodness, but I had them laying around, so they work perfectly fine. I'm also just using a rotary encoder wheel, which is Basically the same thing as is used on all the 3D printer displays. I'm also using a just a basic 2x16 display that I can use to display the at current temperature and my target temperature. The temperature sensor that, that I'm using is quite a neat little thing. It's not just a thermistor, but it has some kind of integrated logic already. So I can just talk with it through a library and get the temperature from it. It also measures humidity. I don't really need that for this project, but it works great. And it seems to be rather accurate as well, at least to like plus minus one or two degrees. The only kind of quirky thing about it is that you can only read the temperature every two seconds. So I had to integrate that into my code. But speaking of code, the code itself isn't all that difficult either. I'm just basically controlling the display over the I2 bus which is done through a beautiful library as well, reading out the sensor and printing out the messages on the LCD. It's actually super simple. Then, of course, I don't have the fans directly attached to the Arduino as it can, can't supply any more near enough power, not to mention that it runs on 5 volt instead of 12 volts. So I'm just using a very simple MOSFET. I have a common ground between the 12 volt and the 5 volt power supply, and then when I send a signal from the Arduino, the MOSFET lets the current flow through and the fan starts spinning. And once I stop sending that signal, it stops. Then finally, I also changed the lights up a bit. It might not look all that different, but 
I added twice as many lights, but I'm now only running them at about a third of their power. That's gonna allow them to stay cool enough uh, while the build chamber is hot in there. Previously, as I was running them at 100%, they were getting so hot that the hot glue, which I used to mount them originally, actually got soft and dripped down. So that was definitely way too hot. Now they're they stay pretty much uh, at a temperature where I can touch them, so they're perfectly fine. And since I moved the electronics just barely outside the box, like right on the other side where they were before, I only had to make one single cable longer. The cable for the heated bed didn't quite reach, but all the other cables, they were just barely long enough, so I didn't have to extend any of them, which was really nice, since that would have been a major pain in the belt. So as it is with projects like this, I didn't get quite as far as I would like. I still want to make a nice enclosure and kind of front panel where I have all the controls united instead of just having bare PCBs floating all over the place. And to really get up to temperature, I still need to replace all the PDG parts from the printer with some annealed polycarbonate, but I haven't finished printing all the parts yet. As some of the parts proved to be rather difficult with warping being an actual issue. And once I go past like 60-70 degrees Celsius, I'm also gonna have to think about cooling the motors, as at some point they're gonna be the weakest link. So I will probably have to add Peltier cooling or water cooling, though probably Peltier cooling is gonna be easier. So I can just use some thermal adhesive tape and slap some Peltier elements to the back of the motors, put a big ass heat sink on the other end so that the motors themselves stay cool. Also, if I wanna go past like 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, I might actually have to add a heater in there. But those are like kind of tricky temperatures anyway, since at some point everything starts to get uh, kind of wacky. The paint starts to, to not work like it, it does anymore. So I'm gonna see how far I wanna take this. But for now, this is gonna be a lot nicer than it was before. And even 60 degrees Celsius as an enclosure temperature helps a lot with stuff like ABS, polycarbonate and all that good stuff.